Thank you. Let's put our hands together and gosh show. To live a pure, simple life, unselfish life, one must count nothing as one's own in the midst of abundance. We are shaped by our thoughts. We become what we think. When the mind is pure, joy follows like a shadow that never leaves. The words of Shakyamuni Buddha, Namo Amida Buts, Namo Amida Buts, Namo Amida Buts. Good morning. Uh, thank you again for coming to the Sunday's morning online and live stream service. I hope all of you are in good health and living your lives in the joy of the Nembutsu as the year 2022 moves on. It is already almost the end of February and we will enter into another season that is spring in approximately one month from today. Time moves on so quickly. Incidentally, I go on leave tomorrow, starting tomorrow for 18 days to visit my family in the mainland. I will be going to the East Coast, to New York and New Jersey. And although it would seem like I'm taking a vacation, I am actually not. There are many family matters that I need to take care of. And besides, I will be celebrating a very important event on February 27. That day marks the 40th year anniversary since I first came to America and started my first job as a nurse in New Jersey. To many, this may sound like I'm being sentimental and longing for the past, but in a way I am. I have realized that life was a lot more fun and easier back in that decade, in the 1980s, that is, in this country. And my first exposure to having a good job, earning a very good pay, and living independently generated a profound feeling of gratitude for the United States, for the opportunity it gave me to be fully functional, despite my difficulty in learning and speaking English. I was so thankful. This sense of gratitude for America still lingers on to this day, although this country has undergone a lot of changes since 40 years ago. Some not necessarily for the better. There's more social injustice now, more poorer homeless people, a less clean and safe environment than before, But overall, this is still a great country to live in. I usually try to avoid using foreign words when giving Dharma messages, but I have to do it this time to explain the concept of gratitude and its opposite meaning in Buddhist context. The two Japanese words, arigatai and atarimai, have special meaning in Buddhism especially Jodo Shinshu Buddhism. I am not an expert in Japanese language, but it's obvious arigata is a variation of arigato to express gratitude. Arigata means grateful or thankful or a grateful attitude. A more profound meaning of arigata was expressed by a professor of Jodo Shinshu Buddhism at Ryokoku University as happiness that comes out of deep reflection. Ataremai, on the other hand, is an attitude of having a se sense of entitlement. It is the attitude that when we are successful or have what we want, we deserve it. And so, with this kind of thinking, the feeling of gratitude or thankfulness is sometimes very far from our minds. We tend to forget that our success or happiness is not just a result of our own efforts, but also because of the causes and conditions that came about due to the efforts of other people or beings. Atarimai also comes into play when it comes to respect. Long-term lasting respect is to be earned. It is not something someone demands or expects. 
just because he happens to wear a special type of uniform or ceremonial clothing or had studied a specialized field of course in a fancy university. Again, respect is to be earned, not demanded. Mostly the only ones who demand respect without earning it in the world scene are obnoxious dictators. Atarimai was also that same attitude that got me upset when the heater broke down in my apartment one cold winter back in 1983 and I felt miserable in the freezing temperature. I was supposed to have hot water. I paid my rent. I am entitled to an interrupted service without taking into consideration the mechanical breakdowns of machines and equipment. I always wanted and expected good results, even though the landlord did not cause the problem and it was swiftly repaired. I held on to my resentment. That is another example of this kind of attitude. It is fostered when things and services are so easily available that we take them for granted. Instead of having that sense of appreciation that things and services are so conveniently available when we need them, we tend to focus on the times when they are temporarily not available due to circumstances beyond any reasonable human control. Instead of being grateful and looking at the positive side of things, we allow negative things to control our emotions. It took me to reflect on what my life was like in my childhood back in the Philippines and also in my adolescent years to realize that there are now a lot more reasons to be thankful for than complain. When we read in the newspapers and watch on TV the tragic events happening in the world today, those wars in Eastern Europe, for instance, and other trouble spots around the world, let's quietly reflect on the fortunate chain of events that came about so that we are now living here in this present time and place in relative peace and comfort. This is contentment, being happy with what we presently have. Of course, this doesn't mean that we should not strive for something better to improve our lives. To the limits of our abilities, we should do our best to improve ourselves, but not to the point of harming ourselves and other people. That is creating suffering instead. There is a saying that goes, happiness or contentment is not having what you want, but wanting what you have. We may have all the money or material things in the world, but we will never feel happy if we continue to unreasonably crave for more. In life, we all encounter moments of great joy and jubilation. New love, new job, marriage, birth of a child, new car, new home, and other comforts. But we also encounter moments of great sorrow and hurt injury, illness, divorce, death, breakdowns or losses of our cherished possessions, disasters, and discomforts. We are each subject to the impermanent and changing factors of the reality we inhabit. It is something we do not have total control over. Things will happen that give us reasons to be happy and comfortable and things will happen to give us reasons to be sad or feel discomfort. That is because we live in this realm we call samsara, the world of delusion and suffering and with no permanent happiness. Impermanence, called anikka in Sanskrit, the ancient language of India, it's one of the three marks of our characteristic of existence that is shared by all beings. The others being suffering or dukkha and unsatisfactoriness and non-self called anatta. Because of impermanence and having a physical body, we will have suffering in this life in one form or another. 
The wisdom of the Buddha's teaching enables us to live our lives in appreciation and gratitude for the many things that support our continuing existence and to acknowledge that suffering is part of our living as human beings. It doesn't necessarily mean to accept it and live with it. Rather, the goal of Buddhist teaching is to gain the wisdom to minimize or transform suffering through understanding of its causes. There is a Buddhist saying that goes, pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. To understand the concept of cause and effect is important to avoid unwholesome actions that bring about suffering, but it is also to look at suffering through the wisdom of impermanence, meaning that any form of suffering or discomfort is not permanent and there are ways to minimize its impact in our lives. Reflecting on the positive side of life is one way. Thinking of how much better off we are than a lot of people elsewhere in the world because of our good karma to be born or live in a relatively comfortable country. At any rate, to experience a little suffering has its positive side. For if we know how it feels to lack something, we learn to appreciate those things that we have in abundance. A little suffering actually sometimes leads to our enjoyment of things that we lacked and wanted when they become available again. An example is food that we normally would regard as bland and unappetizing becomes the most delicious meal when we are desperately hungry. I do not like the taste, odor, and consistency of natto. But if I ever get to the point of starvation and there's nothing else to eat, natto becomes a delicacy to me. It would taste as oh no as pizza. There is a Greek proverb that goes like this. It is not good for all our wishes to be filled. Through sickness, we recognize the value of health. Through evil, the value of good. Through hunger, the value of food. Through exertion, the value of rest. Another quote from ancient Greek philosopher, his name is Epicurus, says, do not spoil what you have by desiring what you have not. Remember that what you now have was once among the things you only hoped for. That saying rings true for me, but unfortunately, not all the time. I am still Bombu, a foolish being. I complain and grumble just like everyone else when I see things that shouldn't be happening the way I think they should. It is not living the teaching of patience, but sometimes it is necessary to draw the line and get tough because I learned the hard way that when some people perceive you to be too, so too soft and too nice, they will manipulate and abuse you trample on your rights, and treat you like garbage or a second-class human being sometimes just for being different in language or cultural origin. It is the ugly side of human nature. So then, it is the gratitude of Arigatai that we should try to foster instead of Atarimai. We reflect on the favors we receive from others every day with grateful hearts and focus on those things that we have instead of what we don't have. In doing so, we can appreciate all the forces at play that enables us to continue living our lives in relative comfort and safety and not take things for granted, not grumble or complain for temporary minor disruptions in our comfort levels. We say that the recitation of Dhanembutsu is our expression of gratitude for Amida Buddha's wisdom and compassion. Indeed it is. And not just reciting, but living Dhanembutsu way of life 
imbues in us that same spirit and feeling of gratitude for other beings and things that make our continuing existence possible. Namo Amida Buts, Namo Amida Buts, Namo Amida Buts. Namanda, Namanda, Namanda.